like to call the June meeting of the Cherokee Village City Council order. Please join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Silent prayer, please. Amen. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Roland? Here. Christy? Here. Kathleen? Here. Ishmael? Here. Thompson? Here. Smith? Here. Martin? Here. Form established. Thank you. Next is approval of tonight's agenda. Mayor, I'd like to add three things to the agenda, please. First one being public spaces. Second thing would be... Pardon? What's the first one? Public spaces. Spacing? Space. Public area. Okay. Second one being setting the salaries of the mayor and clerk for this election year. The third thing... Uh, give me a second. Uh, correspondence is the third thing. What's the third one? Correspondence. Somebody writes letters to the city. I got you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I have a question on Mr. Martin's suggestion. We have a planning meeting uh, that occurs on the third Monday of the month, which actually <clears throat> the origins were requested by Councilman Martin, and I would ask Councilman Martin, you've been absent for several of those meetings, including the last one. Do you intend to uh, attend those meetings so that we could address your concerns that you're raising this evening in a planning process so that we would not have a last minute addition and therefore other councilman could help partic uh, participate in that process. I'm giving you as much notice as I got from everybody else from the city. So I don't I don't have to attend those meetings because those are a working meeting and it's on a date right now that I cannot attend. That's my second reason. And it's been it's been altered to the point where I can't talk about things that are important to us. So it's only on what's on the agenda, and that wasn't my original intention. And I couldn't uh, be at the first meeting because my parents had to be at the hospital that day. And that is my first concern. So that is why they were introduced now. And that's my privilege as an alderman to introduce them now. Thank you. Understood. I appreciate it. OK, those three items will be placed under a new business. Thank you. If everybody's in agreement for approving of amending the agenda, I need a motion. I move to approve. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Christopi, second by Mr. Martin, to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Tonight's agenda is adopted. Okay, next item are public comments on any of the agenda items. Anyone have any comments they wish to make? Hearing none, moving on to approval of the minutes from the uh, May meeting. I motion to approve the minutes. I second. 
Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Martin to approve the minutes for the May meeting to be placed on file for audit. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Minutes are so approved and shall be so filed. Correspondence. Clerk, we have some correspondence. No correspondence. Next item is financial report. Mayor, under street fund, street fund, reserve account, statement, revenue, and expenditures, page one of two. I don't know what line item to tell you, but halfway down the page, we have, uh, I believe it says signage, and we're out of whack 228.86%. Can you inform me or enlighten me what that signage was? And since it wasn't in the budget, who authorized it to be spent? What's, what line item is that? If there's no line items, but it's halfway down the page under roads and streets. Okay. Mr. Street, do you have any comments on what he's asked on <laughs> page number, Mr. Martin? Upper right hand corner. I'm trying to hit the wrong button. On signage? Upper left hand corner. You have a line item that's 200 and something percent out of whack. Page number, please, Mr. Martin. I, I gave it once. I hit the button. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find it again. No, it's on uh, page 22. What page number is that? 22. 23? 22. 22. I didn't know if that's where that was the street signs that we are supposed to alter or what it was. So that's why I'm asking why we are out. Well, we've been replacing street signs by wards. So. It's you, you, would you come up to the podium so everybody can hear you? Decrease that much, but we, we'll be able to handle that. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry. Any other questions on the budget? I mean, on the financial report? I I'm not sure. Second. Second motion. Please. Motion by Mr. Martin, second by Mr. Ishmael to. Approve the financial report to be filed for audit. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Financial report shall be filed for audit. Next item is mayor's report. Uh, I have two things. Uh, one is uh, kind of a celebration tomorrow. Betty Wasser will turn 100 years of age. She's been a longtime resident of the city of Cherokee Village, and they're scheduled to have a birthday parade for her beginning at 10.30. She'll be down here in Papoose Park to be 
observing the, the parade. Um, if you'd like to participate, uh, report to Base Heart Fire Station. That's where the parade will initiate from. The second um, item is relates to cyber security. Um, in this day and age, um, there's a lot of things to be concerned about regarding scams that are ongoing and legitimate looking emails that show up on your laptop or personal computer. Uh, the Municipal League held their annual, started their annual conference yesterday and one of the sessions dealt with cybersecurity and I've observed that virtually. Um, and I would like to alert the audience that there is a scam circulating that makes your bank account vulnerable. Um, you might receive an email that could come from a credit card company, from your bank, uh, or any kind of financial agency. And it will look totally legitimate. Um, one thing that might be a clue to tell you that it's not is you look at the font in the email. That may be different than what you would normally see that come from any of those institutions. Um, and if you accidentally respond to it, your bank account will be hit and anything that you have in your bank account will be totally wiped out. Uh, and what the local bank's policy are, and it was just by coincidence when they were talking about this, I got, when I got home that evening and I was checking on my Facebook and one of my high school classmates who lives in Minnesota, that happened to him. And he had another post today, he went to see his bank, and the bank just told him, you know, woe is you, and he talked to a couple of attorneys, and they said there was nothing they could do because all this originated overseas. Now, I don't know how much money he had in his bank account, but he lost every dollar that he had. Um, so be careful if you get any emails, text messages, anything like that. Uh, this wouldn't, when you get just the response back, it'll be labeled Geek Squad. And uh, they have kidnapped your money, so to speak. So be cautious. Next item are department reports. Question on animal control, not community service. Uh, I make a motion to accept the reports as submitted. Uh, all of them? Or just? All of them. All of them. Okay. Second. Motion for Mr. Martin, second by Mr. Ishmael to accept all the department reports. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Reports are accepted. <coughs> Other reports we have. Uh, for you to review. You want, any, you want to make a motion on that, Mr. Martin? Sure. Uh, I've heard a lot already. So, yeah, I. Uh, Make a motion that we accept the other reports as presented. Second. Motion by Mr. Martin, second by Mr. Ishmael to approve the other reports. A and P, Airport, P and Z, Street Committee, Solid Waste. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? 
Motion and proof adopted. Reports will be filed. Next item is old business. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before you yes. move on to the old business, um, I just wanted to give a point of information back to Mr. Martin since he raised it on the budget issue on the Sorry. street fund on, under the finance. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to review the numbers that were of concern to Mr. Martin. I have subsequently done so. I would note and to Mr. Martin that the dollar amount that he was concerned about uh, on the signage, which uh, was an overage on the budget of about $3,200, is more than offset on receipts for municipal highway severance tax district uh, over what was budgeted. And, uh, and we're certainly on pace, you know, in other areas on the revenue, but and it, and uh, it is halfway through the year. And understood, but understood, and we are halfway through the year. But the revenue from the municipal highway severance tax district offsets the overage in the signage, so it's something that we can adjust within the same department okay. as the year progresses. So, uh, you know, you're, you you pointed out the percentage. Right. But you need to look at the additional revenues above the expense item, you know, that you're mentioning. So if you'll review those, you may feel find Thank more you comfort. For pointing that out. Thank you. Okay, first item under old business, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Shake requested to speak. Um, Mayor, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of them, introduce an ordinance to the city council. Uh, and have it for our review uh, after the conversation is done. Oh. Spelling might be a little off. I wasn't good at that in school, so I'm sorry. We'll need to have that reviewed by the city attorney. He isn't here right now, so I'm just, this is preliminary. It's not going to happen tonight. There you go. There you go. Uh, I just want it for your review and submit it to the city attorney, depending on what happens here tonight. So this is a proposed ordinance for them. Uh, oh, anyone else over here? No. There you go. Thank you very much. And uh, there, there. I will give them the floor now. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, my name is Kurt Schlag. I live at 33 Chinook Lane in Cherokee Village. And tonight I just want to speak on uh, a few different things. One, first thing I want to talk about concerning uh, an ordinance on chickens is some of the myths, false myths that are out there about chickens. Okay, and I I have a document from a, a doctor, of, a person who's got a doctorate in pharm pharmacology, uh, Patricia Foreman, who is a renowned writer of many different books concerning uh, chickens as garden helpers, compost creators, uh, biomass recyclers, local food suppliers. She says there are seven main myths that we have. One, first myth, that chickens carry diseases communicable to humans. The fact is, the truth is that small flocks have literally no risk of avian flu transmission to humans. The 2006 Green Report states that when it comes to bird flu, diverse small-scale poultry is the solution, not the problem. Centers for Disease Control states on their website, there is no need at present to remove a family flock of chickens because of concerns regarding avian flu. Avian flu has been in the press as a concern to commercial poultry production where birds are raised in monster sized flocks that are confined in overcrowded environments. 
This causes high stress and compromised immune systems in the birds. Any sign of disease, including a sneeze, could result in a huge number of birds getting sick. And this puts at risk a large amount of the problem. As many experts have stated publicly, the solution to avian flu is in small-scale poultry. The second myth, chickens are too noisy. Fact, laying hens at their loudest have about the same decibel level as human conversation, which is 60 to 70 decibels. Hens are so quiet that there have been cases of family flocks being kept for years without the next door neighbors even knowing it. Okay, and I know we're not talking about big flock, we're talking about five, five hens. Okay, and just as a comparison, dogs barking bark at 90 decibels. Okay, so there's a reference uh, there for you concerning the noise. The third myth, waste and odor. Fact, a 40 pound dog creates more solid waste than 10 chickens. Okay, and I know we're not talking about 10 in our ordinance, we're talking about five. So to be more specific on that, one 40 pound dog generates about three quarters of feces per day. 10 chickens would generate about two-thirds of a pound. We're talking about five chickens, so we're saying one-third of a pound per day. The advantage of uh, chicken manure is that it can be used as valuable high nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, unlike like dog or cat poop, chicken poop can be combined with the yard and leaf waste to create compost. Just as valuable, about 40% of the chicken manure is organic material, which is necessary for building fertile, healthy topsoil. Chicken manure is so valuable that there are products out there, uh, and, and one that I'm going to refer to is, is called organic chicken manure. 25 pound bag sells for $33. Okay, so. That's $1.33 per pound chicken manure if you want to sell it. What does most co commercial fertilizer come from? You know, you think oil. Can chicken services and products to help us decrease our dependence on oil? Yes, it can, and on many different levels. Myth four, chickens attack predators, pests, and rodents. Fact, predators and rodents are already living in urban areas. Wild bird feeders, pet food, gardens, fish ponds, bird baths, trash waiting to be collected, all attract raccoons, foxes, rodents, and flies. Modern microflock coops, such as chicken tractor arcs, and other pens are ways of keeping and managing family flocks that eliminate concerns about predators, rodents, and other pests. Indeed, chickens are part of the solution to pesky problems. Chickens are voracious carnivores and will seek and eat just about anything that moves, including ticks, fleas, mosquitoes, grasshoppers, stink bugs, slugs, and even mice, baby rats, and small state snakes. Myth five, property values will decrease. Fact, there is not one single documented case that we know of about a next door family flock that has decreased the value of real estate. On the contrary, Local foods and living green is so fashionable that some realtors and home sellers are offering a free chicken coop with every sale. 
For an example of that, you can look at www.greenwaynews.com. Myth six, coops are ugly. Fact, microflock coop designs can be totally charming, upscale, and even whimsical. Some of them are architect design and cost thousands of dollars. Common design features include blending in with the local architectural style, matching the slope of the roof and complementing color schemes. For examples of these, you can also go to www.mypetchicken.com. And the last of the myths, what will the neighbors think? Fact, you can't control what anyone thinks, much less your neighbor. Once folks gain more experience with the advantages and charms of chickens, most prejudice and fear evaporates, especially when you share some of those fresh, hard, health, healthy, good-for-you eggs from the family flock. There is one huge advantage to family flocks that is often overlooked during chicken debates, and that is their role and value in the solid waste management system. Chickens, as clucking civic workers, are biomass recyclers and can divert tons of organic matter from the trash collection and landfills. Chickens will eat just about all chicken waste. They love people food, even those gone by leftovers that have seasoned in the refrigerator. Combine their manure with grass clippings, fallen leaves, and garden waste, and you create compost. Composting with chicken helpers keeps tons of biomass out of municipal trash collection systems. So, all of this can save big time taxpayer dollars, which is especially valuable in these times of stressed municipal budgets. Second thing that I'd like to allude to is the ordinance and why it has been proposed. A couple from our group have been working on this for quite a while. This is just something that was just done overnight. And I felt that they have come up with a reasonable and effective ordinance that should meet the standards of health and the welfare of the city. Now, some excuse for not allowing this that I've already heard has been uh, the Bill of Assurance does not allow this. So my question for that is, so how can we allow cattle in the city and subdivisions, then quote the same subdivision rules not allowing this? If the Bills of Assurance actually had teeth, then isn't the city wrong for allowing cattle. Anyone can take their neighbors to court for anything as it is today. So what exactly does Cooper's Bill of Assurance actually provide these days with no developers to enforce them? You may say that we already have a dog and cat issue of owners not following their enacted laws and chickens would just add to that. So, why aren't they enforcing laws already on the books and dealing with this dog and cat issue? And why are the responsibility of the majority animal owners being lumped in in that issue of being blamed for them not enforcing laws? You may say chickens will bring predators such as bobcats, coons, possums, feral dog, foxes, and others. Well, you know as well as I do, we already have these animals in the village and more. How exactly is this going to increase? Also, you know, I, think, I don't think we can say that this city is, is not a farm. We are so rural here, we have all the wildlife that Arkansas has to offer right here in our city. So much that we have yearly urban deer hunt if folks are not prohibited from feeding deer. 
Also, doesn't the wild turkey that aren't pinned up every night also invite other predators? You might say, if you allow this, that a lawsuit will be filed against the city. Well, I wonder why this wasn't a concern when you allowed cattle inside the city limits. Again, anyone can sue anyone anyways. You may say that chickens are too noisy or smell or feces would end up in the lakes. What about the other wildlife poop that makes it into the lakes? You know, those ducks, geese, cranes, etc. Not to mention the possum, coons, dogs, cats, and oh, let's not forget the chemicals that we use in our yards or for pest control. You may say if we allow chickens, what's next? Goats? Well, we aren't asking for goats. But then maybe again, they would help clean all the underbrush and grass in the village. But again, we've already given permission for one individual to have cows. <clears throat> These bills of assurance are outdated. Almost 60 years ago, it is time for a change. I just ask that you please, please open your hearts and minds to this proposed ordinance. Our village needs this. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, it has come to my attention that these folks tried to do everything they could to bring this in front of the city council legally and in good faith. And I would respectfully ask the city council to consider this ordinance. It has been written by the people with the chickens. And it, if you read it, you can see that they're concerned about a lot of your concerns. They are putting on fees for doing things. They're trying to make it so that you know, they're thinking as a legislator was doing, is doing things. So I, I would respectfully ask that we at least read it and consider it rather than just passing something that was adopted in 1999 for the city as far as not having chickens. And that was only because they pulled everything off bills of assurance because they were ignorant. They didn't know what they were doing and know how they were doing it. That's the same reason we have all the problems we do in Cherokee Village. When they wrote the white papers for Cherokee Village, they incorporated too much. And we can see right now that if we just had the population centers rather than all this extra land, it would probably benefit us without having to go and pave a road for somebody that is the only person that lives on the road. So please, consider this ordinance. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Martin, since are you uh, wanting to present this ordinance, correct? I, I'm wanting to sponsor this ordinance. Okay, what you will need to do is you need to meet with Mr. Abel with that ordinance and then we'll wait to hear back from either him or you. Okay? Thank you very much. That, that'll, that's the next step that will need to be taken. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody? Mr. Sheik, did you want to speak? I live at 33 Chinook Lane in Cherokee Village. I am so-called the chicken lady. I have my petition out there for to get chickens legalized in Cherokee Village. One for people that want them. Another people that need them. I have alpha gal syndrome. I am highly allergic to mammal meat and dairy and the gels and gel pills. There's things I have to look at every day I go to the store to see if I can eat it. Most, I can't. Unless it's fresh fruit and vegetables. Well, you know the prices of those. I can have turkey, chicken, and fish. 
they used to be really good, but when you eat them every day, I just want to help the people here. Alpha Gal is going crazy in Arkansas. It was on the news again. It's been on the news two or three times this last month. I want to help the people. Chickens aren't going to eat 100%. I know that. But if they eat a little bit, that'll help hopefully save some people from getting the Alpha Gal. People get it so serious, they, you have mild, moderate, extreme cases. I'm moderate. I'm 5.5. A friend of mine is 60 something. He's got to carry an EpiPen around with him. We cannot go to restaurants and eat a veggie burger or turkey burger because they don't have room to cook them separate. So we're eating our salads and our fish and chicken and fish. Well, anyway, it's for bug control for me and people that want and need. I've got not 891 signatures. And Mayor, I didn't want to say this, but I have to. Because when I first started this, I asked you, would you sign my petition for chickens in the village? And you said no. It would influence the guys on the council. So what was your answer then? Would you have signed my petition if it was up to you and not up to these guys? You probably would have signed it. You don't want to get Alpha Gal. You don't want to see your friends and family get Alpha Gal. And when I asked for the petition, because I was petitioning down at the dollar store in Cherokee, and I was not harassing people. I just asked for signatures. Somebody reported me to corporate, said I was harassing people. They called the manager. Manager, no, she's not harassing people, which I wasn't. If people said, no, I don't want you, okay, I backed off. I didn't say nothing else to them. She told me that if I didn't leave, that corporate were going to call the police on me. So I said, I'll leave. I asked the mayor, once again, if I could petition a public property, which is out here. He said, no, this is our property. I can say yes or no to who I want. I'm just trying to help the people. The second time, I asked him, can I please because the past week park won't let me. That's private property. I said, please, I don't have anywhere else to go. I need more supporters, and I know they're out there. People are supporting me that don't want chickens. But they're supporting us, the people that do want or need them. So the last time I asked him, he's like, no. But. You can bring your petition in here on the desk in the hallway so people can sign your petition. But guess what? I can't stay there. So I couldn't tell them about my petition. So I told them, no, thank you. We want to go natural, bug control. Do you know the chemicals that we're putting in our yards are going into the lakes? in the creeks. What's that doing to our wildlife here? My husband hasn't had a good fishing day in almost two years now. He used to catch them like that, the crap. Chickens, if their poop gets in the water, they like that. They eat chicken poop. It's good for them. It's got protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. I'm not saying people go dump their chicken poop in the lakes or the creek. No. You clean up your mess. If some gets in the water, it's fine. No big deal. What about, what is a farm animal? Chickens are farm animals. Ducks are farm animals. Guinea fowl are farm animals. Turkeys are 
farm animals. Some roosters are farm animals. What's wild in our woods? Turkeys, guinea fowl. Oh, shoot, chickens aren't in there. That's another question I asked if they didn't want chickens in the village. Can we, the people, get wild guinea fowl and put in our woods? Nope, they're too noisy. Have you ever heard the tree frogs? We got tree frogs like crazy. Um, the turkeys? Yeah, we got turkeys, a couple turkeys in our backyard, but they don't come too close to eat my ticks. And there are guinea, wild guinea fowl in the village. And the people love them. They said, oh yeah, they're kind of noisy, but I haven't seen a tick around us for a while. We moved here. This is the first place we've been down here. Because my husband's like, I want to move to Minnesota. I am not moving to Minnesota, it's too freaking cold. So we found Cherokee Village. We fell in love with Cherokee Village and the people. They're so nice here. The realtor said, because I go, oh, we live out in the country. She goes, no, you live in the city. I go, oh, can we have chickens? She's like, no, you live in the city. Okay, I didn't think anything of it. We've been in here over six years now. Now, I want and need chickens. The people that are moving in here are finding out the stuff that the city's doing, not controlling, um, being, or somebody gets fined, not making them pay their fine, you know, Somebody's like, well, I'll clean up your yard. No, you got three warnings, you're going to get fined. Okay, I'll get fined, but um, he gets fined. And does he pay his fine? Nope. Somebody needs to enforce the laws here. <clears throat> the people that are moving here, moved here, they wanted to get away from the city life, or like us, we want to get out of the state life in Illinois, which is bad. They love chickens, but living there, uh-uh. We had to get out of there. People are moving here. People are talking about moving away. People are looking now to be here. When they find out all the stuff that you can and cannot do here, I don't want to move here. Can we find another place? I'll get your village. If we do this right, man, this place would be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And that's what I moved here to reach. My husband retired. A lot of these people who retired to move here in Cherokee Village, Arkansas. Let's make it safe for the people. We get home for the people. <clears throat> Let's make a vacation place for the people. Get these places fixed up. Get these pools fixed. If you don't have the money, you know, you're going to charge, charge me a fee for having my, to get, get a permit for check, my chickens. That's fine. Charge me every year. Then I'll help you guys get this stuff fixed so we can enjoy the village. Together as a family. Instead of village people that used to sing and dance, we're going to be Cherokee Village people. Thank you. God bless you guys. Next item will be a new business. Um, we have a resolution to declare an item surplus property and remove from the city of Cherokee Village property asset list. Uh, please read the resolution. Mayor, I unfortunately didn't receive the asset list and said it was a cash. It's Pardon? the very last page. It's the very last page? The very last page. Thank you very much.
a resolution to declare an item surplus property and to remove from the city of Cherokee Village property asset list. Whereas the city is mandated by statute to officially declare property as surplus in order to remove said property from the city pro property asset list. Now therefore, it is hereby resolved by the city council with the concurrence of the mayor. The described property list on the attachment is declared as a surplus to be removed from the city property asset and or inventory list and offer for sale at competitive bids. Any questions on the attachment? Did the city buy this with their own revenue? Was it a branch? I catch it. Was this uh, owned by the city, all this stuff here? That yes. Was okay, was it through like some special branch or anything they would get permission for them to sell it? A lot of this stuff has come in over the years. Yeah. Uh, the air compressor, I think we bought that 17 years ago. This is all fire department. A lot of the stuff that we got that, that you're looking at here is no longer really even usable. Um, right. the, the air ventilation uh, system that we got, we had to purchase the new one because it upheated to the point where it was going to catch on fire, of course. So uh, we were going to create our own fire to have to put it out. Um, out of all the things here, it would be hard to go back to their origin and tell you which ones were given to us by grant or which ones were purchased um, from the state when they had a sale. But, uh, it, if you were to look at the stuff that we're selling, like the trailer and everything, it's no longer optimal for our use. It's really in the way. Um, we have to move it out of the bay every time we clean up the area and move it back in. Uh, but we've never used that trailer once. I mean, since I've been a volunteer fireman, and that's been 13 years. And usually, if it is on a grant, it's usually about three years, and then it's ours to do with what we want. Gotcha. All right. The chief is not here, he's on vacation, but most of the items on this list are applicable to fire departments except for the generators and possibly that uh, those two trailers. Uh, so you're going to have probably exclusive bidding by fire departments on those, those items and the others, the general public. Well, there might be somebody in the general public who might be interested in some of these others, but Mayor, I don't know. To, to dispose of these products, these items, before when we disposed of some things, there was some bad blood about auction, I think it was a boat at one time. It, are we going to have a procedure that we know of and how it's done that's going to be followed so that that doesn't get brought up again? There was a boat that was put up for sale and we gave it to somebody that was in the city rather than, this is the rumor that I heard, it's all rumor. But, uh, Point of order, yeah, ahead. Mr. Martin, I mean, if you want to discuss rumors, well, I, 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 I mean, that's, that's right. not, that's not, not point of order, point of order, and I'm going to make it. What's before this council to vote on is the dispensing of this property. What's not before this council right now is a discussion of any rumor, verified or otherwise. So what we're discussing, what's I'm on the agenda for it's discussion. Going to be disposed, and are we gonna follow the rules that we present for it? We're following, disposed? we're following. No, we're not. It hasn't been followed in the past, and I wanna make sure it's gonna be followed in the future. Specifically, we followed the rules on is there the other items. And verify this thing about the boat that I've heard is a rumor. Would you please stand up and verify okay, what, we can what rumor I've heard? Mr. Martin, you're Mr. out of order. You're out of order. Sit down. down. You are out of order. He's asking for something. You are out of order. Have your seat. We're dealing with this resolution, and that's it. And it and you, we have followed. We have followed the procedures. What are the procedures? Show them to me. What are the procedures for disposing? It's a if you, auction. If it you, you're going to put it into an auction. Mr. Martin, you could come to my office. No, I'm going to do it right here, right now. Everybody
every time you tell me come to my office, I want to know. And you never public. show up. I want to know in public. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. and Mr. Mayor. We post, and we post an ad in the local media. This is what I want to hear. And then if it's not sold that way, or we reject the bid, then we will try the open marketplace on social media. Thank you. All I want to know is what the Th that's, rules are. That's how it's done. There's the rules. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. It's not posted in any place here. Any more questions on this resolution? I make a motion we pass. I a second. Motion by Mr. Martin, second by Mr. Smith to approve adoption of this resolution for the sale of this surplus property. Um, roll call vote, please. Next item is declaration of a council vacancy. We have a letter of resignation from uh, Mr. Carr Hill. Um, do you have there in front of you? Uh, Clerk, you want to read that letter, on, please? Sir, I don't see a signature on it, and I don't see it dated. When was it given to us? It's given to the clerk. What, what day was it given to the clerk? And the oh. copy I have is not signed by. Why does that matter? Because there's a procedure for doing it. No, it doesn't, or doesn't you have to have a date or on when the letter is submitted? Sir, when, when a person resigns, that's what they do. We can't compel Mr. Hill to do anything who no longer lives here. Anybody can type that letter and send it in. There's no signature on it. Mr. Hill took a job in Melbourne. I understand. That is a point and of And I knew fact. that at last city council meeting. So I'm asking. When did it come in, and why is it in sign? I can't answer that. That was sent by email. Fine. Those are things I don't know. No, but that's but I, I'm accepting it. Please read the letter. To whom it may concern, effective immediately, I, Clark Hill, the third, am resigning from my city council of Cherokee Village. I have sold my property in the village and will be moving to Melbourne to be closer to work due to a job change. I am proud to have had the opportunity to serve my community and grateful to have been considered for my seat of War II. Thank you for this experience. So, sincerely, Clark Hill. Okay, I require a motion to accept this letter. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Martin, second by Mr. Smith to accept the letter of resignation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, we have a procedure for filling this vacancy, and uh, this is Ward 2. And essentially, anyone interesting who lives in Ward 2 to file for this position need to get a petition. Um, and you can obtain this from the city clerk. And you'll need 10 signatures of uh, registered voters within your ward. And then return the petition. Uh, we have to act on this on the next meeting. So preferably return the petition at least a week before the meeting, allow ample time for the verification of those signatures. And uh, I would suggest if you are interested, you can refer online to uh, the ordinance, which is, uh, let's see here, 2005-7, uh, not an ordinance, I'm, excuse me, resolution, and that will uh, explain the procedures and most of everything that needs to be done. And at that meeting in July, the council will be asking questions of any of the candidates who have submitted uh, valid petitions. And the decision will be made at that meeting to fill the vacancy. And just to reiterate, we are putting that in the paper and letting the public know one other way. That Pardon? We are also putting that in the paper and letting the public know 
that that position is yeah. available. And that's a two-year position. It'll also be filed on the city website. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, next item under new business is amended uh, mark spacing. Is that? Public space. Okay, public space. I, I am at a loss for public space here at the grounds. You, you heard her testimony, I guess, about her being refused the ability to have a position, uh, a, uh, a petition signed here in Cherokee Village. Well, I just saw Alderman have a petition signed for them to be Alderman again. So, if we disallow the public to do it in a public space, then why are we letting everybody else do it? So, is this a public space or not? I would like the council to decide this and then put down rules. Because I can understand it if a person's out here polling or a person is out here skateboarding up and down the thing causing a nuisance, but if a person's standing or sitting in one spot and asking people to sign a petition, is that something that we want to reject? I mean, that's part of politics. That's, that's why we are what we are here in the United States of America. You know, and if this is public land, which it is, we own it, it's not, not we, the people own it. So, as an owner, I would assume she'd have every right. Now, if she was being a nuisance and harassing, I understand your reason exactly. Say, no, you cannot be here. But we need to set a policy as a council so any mayor or anybody just can't randomly say, you can do it, you can't, you can do it, you can't. So it would be nice if, back to my first of the year, where I said we have, ought to have bylaws and set them up. This could be one of the things in that little book of bylaws that states how we are to let the people in our public space. That's, that's <coughs> what I'm asking. So consider it. If you want to pass it over to the next meeting, I, I would greatly appreciate that we come up with something. I would say, recommend you handle that the same way this ordinance. You meet with Mr. Abel and review that with him. The thing is, it's a public space. You review so, that, review, so, meet with him, Mr. Martin, and review that. I, okay, I, I'm just letting you know, I understand your authority of the grounds. I'm not complaining about that. That's your bailiwick. But as a council, I'm asking the council members that we should define what a person can or cannot do here. If it's going to be sign a petition for me to be an alderman, or sign a petition for me to have chickens, or sign a petition for me to let alligators in the lake, whatever it happens to be, we should say if it's a politically arranged thing, then we don't have the authority to refuse them public space. And I will get with Mr. Abel and try and present something if you want something written out. Okay, number two, what was that? Election. Election. Yes, it is an election year. And in the past, the city council has set the elected official salary prior to the election. Because if we don't set a salary, well, we know we're supposed to be on budget crunch and the tax didn't pass. And if we set a salary at a reasonable rate for all the elected officials, then when it rolls around, they will not assume what the last mayor had or the last clerk had, okay? We've done it in the past. And I'm asking us if we will bring that back forward and redo and set the salaries for the elected officials for this election cycle. We have, an, I believe we have an ordinance that has that set. Yes, but the last thing I was reading in the ordinance is it was, uh, it was, uh, I don't want to say deleted, that's not right. It was taken out of the ordinances, I think, about four years ago. So I'll have to read through them again, but I'm under the impression that we don't have that set. And the city council should set that number, and it should be set before the election. It would be even nicer if it was set before all your uh, petitions are in by the 11th of August, if we could. That way, the council can always later raise it, but they can never lower a salary. 
So if we set it at a reasonable rate, then the new council or the council in the year after the election can always raise it, but you cannot ever lower a salary unless the person that has a salary volunteers to lower it. So I would like to bring that back. That's my it's it's on the books. We just discussed this item with the auditor. It's and it's on there. But we didn't set a number. It's set. It's so this council should set a number because this is different there. than when it was done before. We have a new set of finances that is going. Are you on. proposing changing it? Changing I'm, the amount? I'm, propo I'm proposing that we set the number if the ordinance is still in play. Yes. You want to change the number? I I don't even know what the number is. Well, the, I would suggest a new. Go to, go to the city website and pull up the when resolution of the ordinance. ordinances, I, I didn't see it where it was it's, supposed It's in there, I can guarantee you, because I've had a discussion with the auditor. Okay, then, then my proposal is we set it for this election cycle. Because it should be done every two years. Because things change in the city. And we lost all this money from SID. Mr. So, Martin, if you read that, you'll find there's a stipulation in there to cover all that. Okay? And if you have a question, call me. Then do you have to know the ordinance number off the top of no, your head? No, I don't off the top of my head. Okay. I, I, I will. I will there's a, there's an ordinance and a resolution. Uh, I will make sure it's done by next meeting, but I'd like that to be put on the agenda for next meeting. Please. Well, we'll need something in writing then for that. Okay. Uh, I'll submit something in writing for the What was the Okay, your next item is correspondence. Correspondence. Correspondence is a tricky thing. Because the only correspondence I ever hear is the attaboy and the pat on the back. And we've got a correspondence from the lawyer that's addressed to the mayor and the councilman. And we're not in a lawsuit. It's the lawyer's opinion. But yet on this piece of paper, and I think it's just a little standard thing that all lawyers put on the bottom of the piece of paper, that you can't share this with anybody because it's an attorney-client privilege, yada, yada. But it was the public that asked for this opinion. And when it is presented, did you present it to Planning and Zoning too before they made their opinion? So they didn't even get to see it. So maybe if the powers that were, that are making these judgments on these people actually read what the lawyer suggested to us, and I don't see why Planning and Zoning couldn't have seen it either because it should be a public document. So there is my problem. We do not read all correspondence that comes through. Somebody decides what is read and what isn't read. And the only thing I ever heard is the good stuff. And yes, it is nice that we do all these good things, but we have to be reminded of what things we aren't doing. And there are people that are just going to bitch. I understand that. But sometimes there's some good criticism out there. And I, I want to say this thing with the letter from Johnny. That, in my opinion, is public knowledge. That should we, the council, ask for his opinion, and it should have been read at the beginning of the session as correspondence, just like the letter from Mr. Carter was correspondence, and that should be read during correspondence. So I'm asking the council, council, could we please, as a council, decide what qualifies for correspondence? Or let's say a councilman and the mayor sit down and decide what they're going to have going on with the council's approval. That way there might be a little bit more realistic uh, things being said during times of correspondence than just the attaboys and the pats on the back. Thank you. I appreciate well, it. Well, since you've mentioned that correspondence from the city attorney, since you're going to be meeting with the city attorney, then I would address that with him. Well, it's, it's not that it's, it is a public document. Well, you we need to address, ask, Peter, address that with the city attorney. You, you have your opinion, and I'm sure he has his. Okay? okay. You take that up with the city attorney. So when I go to him, he asks me why I'm there. I said, the mayor said I could come over here. You might, and you might want to wait a few days because he's in quarantine. Yeah, well, I can still call. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.
Thank you, Council, for indulging me in my little endeavors. I appreciate you listening. Okay, next item are comments on city related business. We have six individuals. Uh, Mrs. Cantrell, <clears throat> you know, come up to the podium, please. You have three minutes, everyone, and please state your name and address. I'm Carissa Cantwell, 3 Caddo Drive, here in the village. Um, I want to just say something about the chickens. I am a multi-generational Arkansas native um, over on the other side of the state. I actually lived in Bella Vista, so I'm familiar with the Cooper communities. I did go up to Boise for 20 years for a job. When I retired, I wanted to come back to Arkansas, but I wanted to be a little bit more rural, so I picked your village. So, um, you know, some of the, I didn't know we were having the problems over here, <laughs> but anyway, we'll work through all that. Um, but I just want to say on the chickens, I am not going to necessarily run out and get a coop full of chickens, but I would like to have that option. Because as we all know, between supply chain and prices, and growing up in the Ozarks, I pulled chicks off me all my childhood. And coming over here and getting a new yard in order, I've probably pulled off 20 this year. And I do know, because if you have the chickens in the tractor, you can move them to different parts of their yard. They do help keep down the ticks for me and my dog. Um, like I said, I'm not necessarily going to run right out and do it, but if eggs get 12 bucks a dozen, yeah, I would like to have five little chickens to, you know, provide for me. And it's, I have no one around me. I'm all woods, which I know makes the tick issue worse for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, I would like to have that option in the future. And I know other people would as well. Thank you. Hi. Next speaker, uh, Ms. Donna Logan. Yes, my name is Donna Logan. I live at number two Nooksa Drive. I've been here for 10 years. I had arrived here and within 24 hours I started getting ticks on me. I now have a raging case of Alpha Gal. I would very much like to be able to have chickens if I so decide in the future. I have a garden and very few options as far as protein is concerned. Chicken, which I would never kill one, but I buy chicken. Eggs, turkey, fish, shrimp, that's it. It gets old, folks gets old real quick. I keep hearing from people, oh, chickens aren't allowed. It's, there's a law against it. There's an ordinance against having chickens. You know there are chickens in Cherokee Village. There are chickens here. So you don't have an ordinance against them. You have a don't tell policy. Okay? If you want to make it legal, you can find, or find people that don't take care of them. You can also issue permits and help a little bit with the city costs. Okay? That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pam Stewart. and I am at 177 Kottawatomie and I'm here to, on behalf of some very close friends of mine, one of them's here and one could come, that I have watched them suffer from alpha gal and I actually did not even know about it until I saw, I'd been out with them um, and when they were eating something that they were they could order, you know, fish or chicken or whatever, but if it had been cooked with something that they shouldn't have had, I've had a friend that had a really bad reaction. Anyway, so I'm here to just represent my friends that would like to have chickens in their backyard. 
behind a fence and just they make it go out in the yard when not worry about the ticks as much and she does, you know, do what we all do. But that kind of, anyway, I'm also here because I am a realtor and I've been a realtor for 18 years in Jonesboro and here. And uh, I actually had this happen this week and I just mentioned it to one of my friends and I didn't know about this tonight. And um, so I had a realtor, I mean, I didn't take call, forget it, <laughs> sorry. I had a client's future, well, let me start over. I had buyers that called from Utah just the other day. And she was so excited that she had discovered Cherokee Village. And so I was telling her all the good things, you know, about Cherokee Village. And she said, can hey, we have chickens? And I'm sure I had a house picked out. And we have a lot of people that are putting offers in without coming. So that's what she's ready to do on the phone. And she said, can you have chickens? And I said, as far as I know, we can't, we can't, but I will check it out tomorrow. And um, then, then she said, you know what? I want you to look for other places outside of the village if, they, if you can't have chickens. And so that was just one case. I've had a lot over the last, especially the last few years, since I, I was living in both towns, but I do live in Cherokee Village only now. And I've had that happen before, where people have asked me for a place in Cherokee Village if they could have chickens. And I, I have told you that I found out that they can't. Anyways, that's why I'm here. I'm not representing my real estate company, Eddie Kim Bowser, and I'm a realtor, and I have clients here, but I'm not here for my company. I'm here for my friends and my future clients, I hope. <laughs> I had someone ready to put an offer in, like I said. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Ron Stamper. My name is Stamper Rory. I moved my parish down here in 67. I've owned the place by myself since 81. So I've been here a long time. Background information, I don't want chickens. Reason, my dad raised chickens. Chickens stink. And if you had to uh, attend chickens, you'll understand what I mean. I understand that someone said that the real estate property will go up if you have chickens in a city. Uh, I went through college at Lewis and Clark and took courses for fee appraisals. When I took them, this was uh, about 69, it did not, it brought down the real estate value. It's called ec uh, economic obsolescence. So I think you should check into it before you make any decisions. I'm strictly against it. That's my thought. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephanie Taylor. Hi, my name is Stephanie Taylor. I was up here last month. My I have the same feelings I had last month. Um, I'm wanting chickens because I should have the right to. My husband and I bought and paid for our home. It's a paid for. We paid to live there. We should have the right to have, I think five is a pretty low amount to be asking for, but I will accept five. And I think that uh, y'all need to come on and get with the real world. We're living in 2022, this isn't 1969, this is 2022. Check with other towns, look around the rest of the world. We are living with a dinosaur bunch down here. We moved here after we retired and worked all our lives, and we did not know when we bought our home here that we could not have chickens till after we had already bought it. And I came down to City Hall here, and the lady says, no chickens. But you can find it, you can do this, you can do that. And I said, I would. So I just want y'all to know, it's just not fair for people to work all their lives and then come to live in the country like we do. We're the only house on our street. We have almost an acre of ground. We have a garden, just like this other lady, but we are being eaten alive by ticks. And I brought evidence. I told about it last time, and I'm going to show you that I 
not full of baloney. Wayfair. You can get on Wayfair. You can get on eBay. Here's a rolling chicken coop. You can roll it around your yard and it takes care of the ticks. Here's another one. There's all kinds. They start from $199 up to four or $500. So just about anybody can afford one. I'm just asking y'all to either give us this right or maybe it would come to a uh, agreement, maybe a trial, and let us try it and see how things go. But we should, this time to get with the 2022 instead of 1967. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next, uh, Mrs. Marianne Quick. Petitioner, I don't have that in the way.
next item would be announcements. I would like to remind everybody that uh, July the 4th is coming up here in about two weeks and a few days. The fire department will be sponsoring their annual pancake breakfast on the 4th down at Base Heart Station. Also, we will be having a boat parade and fireworks display at Lake Thunderbird later that day. Um, if you want, and this is all being sponsored by the A&P Commission. Um, and we also have a runoff election next Tuesday. Here, voting will take place here in this room. Um, runoff is for the uh, District 2 State Representative House seat. Um, and I encourage everybody to get out and vote. Anybody, any of you have any announcements you wish to make? There's also a, a uh, Senate, state Senate seat runoff. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. There's a, also a runoff for state Senate seat. will be closed on Juneteenth. Thank you. We're observing it on the 20th, right? Yeah. No other announcements? I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion Mr. Martin, second Mr. Christopher. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.